Hi, well, of course, young Boris here isn't truly a sponsor of this occasion, but he is a fantastic illustration of the difficulties that politicians face and the personal difficulties facing individuals who want to either outrun or in Boris's cases, out cycle a bad diet. And we know what happened to him during the COVID crisis. And let's not forget what it is that we're about here. This slide neatly illustrates the difference between health span and lifespan. And I would rather be the 100% rather be the glamorous granny aged 82 on the left than the guy on the right who is alive, but is it really a life? So we need to be very careful what we're focusing upon. Now back to Boris and at the end of the COVID crisis, at least at the end of the first lockdown, there was an eat out to help out to, to you know, reinflate the uh, economy and to stimulate um, the uh, industry. And one of my staff, who's a slim, fit, uh, non-diabetic 20 year old female, went from McDonald's. And as you can see, she was wearing the continual glu blood glucose monitor. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see that her basic blood glucose control is excellent. But look on the right hand side of the screen and you can see what the McDonald's did. And this is what all of us are doing on a daily basis to ourselves, young, slim, fit, healthy people, never mind the rest of us, being taken way into the diabetic range without realising it, it, it by eating ultra processed food. Now, there's a thing called the glycemic index, which we may have all heard about. And that, in theory, gives you your glycemic response equivalents of, say, a couple of pieces of toast, some roast potatoes, some rice, some pasta, etc. And while it's true across a thousand people, on an N equals one, an individual basis, you get equal and opposite reactions to the same food in terms of your glycemic response. Why is that? Well, we have this concept in healthcare called the bell-shaped curve. And depending on which end of the curve you are, you can get completely opposite reactions to the same things. And your assumption may well be as it was mine, this is about your genes. Well, not so much. The fantastic work that Tim Spector has done with identical twins shows that even identical twins who remember are genetic clones and have been brought up in the same house can have equal and opposite reactions to the same food. So where does the answer lie? And the answer is in the microbiome the 100 trillion bacteria residing in the deep dark recesses of our gut, which help us metabolize our food, help with our vitamins, help actually with our mental health and have a huge effect on our glycemic control. So look after your microbiome, tend it like a garden and it will look after you. And it also explains while you may think that you know what's healthy and what's not, actually you can't tell. And that is why the uh, introduction of uh, continued blood glucose monitors has been such a fantastic game changing effect, not just in type 2 diabetes, not just in type 1, but in the entirety of metabolic syndrome. So as part of our prolongevity program, everyone gets uh, at least eight weeks of CGM and mostly more than that. And for the first couple of weeks, we tell them to completely behave as normal eat what they normally do, like, do and just keep, lead their normal lifestyle. And we hope by the end of a couple of weeks, we've got a fairly good handle on which foods for them are healthy and which foods are not. Simultaneously, we also get all the standard biometric data from their GP. So their blood, uh, their HbA1c, if that's been tested, their lipids, uh, their liver function probe as well. So by the end of a couple of weeks, we've got all the tests done, uh, collected from the GP, and we can see how their lifestyle is affecting them on a very individual basis. And our most important intervention comes at the end of week two, when we can start to identify the low hanging fruit. We all know that in healthcare, that making too many changes at once is unsustainable. But if you can make small incremental changes and you can see, as my clients can in real time, how it's affecting you looking at your blood glucose, um, you can start to understand how your body reacts individual, individually and start to make small incremental sustainable changes over time. And here's a beautiful illustration of exactly that from uh, Dr. David Unwin. 
and it's a type 2 diabetic and he's had breakfast on two days running and on the first day running he had some healthy whole grains in the fa in, in the shape of some porridge and on the second day he had a nice omelette now if you think if you look at the glycemic response uh, the porridge has taken him well into the diabetic range the omelettes had almost no effect but if you stand a bit further back and think about nutrition well porridge despite what you may have been led to believe is basically a ton of sugar with very little nutrition and the beauty of the eggs are they are full of nutrition they're low in calories but there's no carb in them at all and hence the results that you can see and it starts to illustrate the kind of food swaps that you can make to be a healthier version of yourself so how does this play out in practice? Well, here's Beryl, one of my clients, um, and she had menopausal symptoms. Now, Beryl was 82 and she'd had these menopausal symptoms since her 50s. She'd been to see her doctor. The doctor had prescribed HRT entirely reasonably and it hadn't, she hadn't got on with it. And so she'd stopped for 20 years. She described the most terrible night sweats that would wake her up every night. And she'd had terrible sleep for the whole of that 20 years. And she would wake up with classic menopausal symptoms. Well, you may say it seems somewhat strange for a lady of 82 to be having menopausal symptoms. And this is what we found. This is nothing about her, her uh, estrogen or her progesterone and everything about her insulin. And because she had so much insulin all the time to control her blood glucose, when she wasn't eating, she'd have these profound nighttime hypos. And within a few weeks, we got her into the green, green zone. Uh, we got her off the excess carbs. Her waist came down, her weight came down, her raised blood pressure came down. But the thing for her that mattered most was she'd had the best sleep that she'd had in 20 years. And here's another example. This is a young lady with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, because uh, raised insulin leads to PCOS um, and is a huge cause of infertility in, in young women. And again, we got this young lady uh, into the green zone until one evening, big spike up to 11 plus and well into the diabetic range. What was that, you may ask? A pizza, a Mars bar? No, one piece of pineapple on the family barbecue. Anyway, I'm happy to report she went on to get pregnant and the baby's now uh, aged one and a half. And here's a typical example, uh, Mariola, who is actually a specialist diabetic nurse. And at the start, she was having quite a few highs. Um, and as we brought down her carbs, she then tended to have a few hypos because her insulin, remember, was still raised. But she persevered and she gave up drinking the litre of fruit juice she'd always drunk, thinking it was one of her five a day. And within a few weeks, her waist came down, her blood pressure came down, everything normalised and we got her nice into the green zone. So what is it that we focus upon? It's not just HbA1c, which just like many other of these tests on their own can be confusing and not tell you very much. We look at time in range and we look at the level of control. So we want to see over time because you can have a, perf a normal HbA1c as a result of lots of highs and lots of lows unhealthy or you can have a nice steady blood glucose and a nice steady result, same HbA1c, but nice tight control. So we're looking for time in range, no excursions, and that is the circumstances in which your insulin will come down and allow everything to progress as it should. And as a result, we see resolution of all of the aspects of metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes, waist comes down, weight comes down, sleep improves, mood improves, blood pressure improves, and all the, all the good things that go with that. So this one single intervention is very profound in terms of your total health. And here's a great example. This is a GP, uh, one of my clients. He was diabetic, he had severe sleep apnea, so severe in fact that his wife could, would no longer sleep with him because the snoring was just too much. He was completely out of control and he had a load of other inflammatory symptoms. And you can see within a few months, his waist uh, came down, his weight came down, his blood pressure dropped, uh, his psoriasis symptoms. But the most important thing to me was when his wife came to me and said, thank you for giving me my husband back. So let's not forget what it's all about. Our medicine should be our food and our food should be our medicine. Thank you.